Alright everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are checking out Jim Thorpe, number 37 on the top 100 NFL's greatest players of all time. I want to welcome you back. If you've been here since the start, I want to say thank you. We're at number 37. Oh, let's do this guys. I'm going to roll the intro and see you in a second. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... Oh. Check out Major Key Physiques for the best in sports apparel and workout accessories. They have free shipping worldwide for all orders over $150. Use discount code JACOB10 for an extra 10% off. Enjoy the video and I'll see you there. Okay, number 37. Running back. I always love those. Let's get into it. The sport had its beginnings. The professional football... Oh, uh, it looks like 60s again. A home for football history, where visitors are greeted by the legendary <laughs> Jim Thorpe, whose flowing power and grace are captured in an eternal run. All right, I better do a bit of research before this time. Um, Jim Thorpe, he looks like a bit of an old timer. James Francis Thorpe. Oh my gosh. Look at him. In the 20s. Wow. <laughs> looks like a beast. How do I get out of that? There we go. James Francis Thorpe. He was born May 22nd or 28th, 1887. He, he, was, he died at age 65, March 28th, 1953. Isn't that some history? He became the first Native American, Native American, to win a gold medal for the United States. Considered one of the most versatile athletes of modern sports, he won Olympic gold medals in the 1912 pentathlon and decathlon and played American football, professional baseball and basketball. He lost his Olympic titles after it was found he had been paid for playing two seasons of semi-professional baseball before competing in the Olympics, thus violating the amateurism rules that were then in place. In 1983, 30 years after his death, the International Olympic Committee restored his Olympic medals. Wow! Well, you could have done it a bit earlier. Okay, we've got, we got heaps of history. Man, this is, this is insane. I don't know who's going to talk about him. I don't know what footage we're going to have, but it's going to be interesting. He was a running back. Beneath the rainbow dome of the rotunda. Let's go, Jim. by his Native American mother. Bright path. Most everybody else knew him as Jim Thorpe, two-time Olympic gold medalist and the world's greatest athlete. Wow, Whatever back in 1912. What care about in America in 1912. Insane. Jim Thorpe did it better than anybody. I mean, if you were a track and field fan, he was the greatest runner in the world. If you were a baseball fan, he was one of the greatest baseball players in the world. If you were a football fan, he was the greatest football player in the world. He happened to be one of the great billiards players of all time, although people don't really know that about him. He was a great ballroom dancer. He won prizes at ballroom. Are you guys hearing this? This is insane. Dancing. Thorpe saved his smoothest steps for the gridiron. From Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania to the fledgling professional ranks. He was so elusive as a runner, the men who played against him remembered how he would give you a hip and then take it away. He, he let you think you could tackle him and then all of a sudden he'd be gone. The hip bang! Was he'd bang off the right, would he? Heels. Got it. Thorpe could also I got you, Jim. through would-be tacklers. Future Notre Dame head coach Newt Rockney learned that the hard way. He was playing left end for the Madison Tigers, and I was playing left half back. He slipped through and tackled me for a couple of yards losses, and I patted him on the shoulder. I said, young fellow, you're doing wonderful. But look at all the people up here in this town that come to see old Jim run. How about letting old Jim run? So the next time I carried the ball around, I hit him in the head with my knee and tip and bowled him over and went on down for a 60-yard touchdown. So after the point after the touch time, here come poor old Rock with a player under each arm and, and all the way down with a sponge and I walked up and patted him on the shoulder and said, that boy Rock, you let old Jim run, didn't you? <laughs> the fields were slower and boggier. They had terrible shoes. 
Their I love it. were stuffed with flannel, and when they got wet, they weighed 15 pounds. He could run like that with all that crap on him. My God, how great he must have been. But Damien Tomlinson has it much easier than Jim Thorpe ever had it. I often think that with rugby, like even with just with the balls and also with the tops and everything, they're, they're quite aerodynamic and like they're made of like polyester fabric now. They used to be made of cotton and just be absolutely thick as hell and big collars on them. But the balls, man, and it was the same in football. The old rugby balls were lit, like just like rock. They were so hard, so heavy. I, I, I don't know how they kicked it. I don't know how they passed it. I don't know how they caught it, but they did. Thank God for technology. There wouldn't be an NFL without Jim Thorpe. In 1920, he gave the newborn league credibility as its first president and its first on-field star. He played for several teams, including the all-Native American Oorang Indians. This is the only footage known to exist of Thorpe playing in the NFL. Oh, mate. This is going to be brilliant. We know him mostly from faded photographs, yet his legend runs on. Bo, oh, the boomer! Oh! We hear the faint. Oh my god, this is just buzzing me out. That is a 1920. That is a hundred years ago. Yet it looks like just any other guy down at the field kicking the ball. Sport is an amazing thing of what he was, but it's loud enough. Had anybody been there to see the real thing, I think we'd call him hands down the greatest player who ever lived. Jim Thorpe, what an absolute legend. That is definitely the oldest player I've seen so far in my travels into the world. Of American football but if you have enjoyed this video if you have liked it hit the like button if you want to subscribe for more please do and uh, I'm gonna be back for another one very soon that was Jim Thorpe we're gonna be back with Raymond Berry number 36 he's a Hall of Fame wide receiver but it's a bit of a shoo-in they're all gonna be Hall of Famers from now on but he is a wide receiver but Jim Thorpe was a running back Although it seemed like he could do absolutely everything. <laughs> How tall was he? Six foot one. In 1920, he was six foot one. He probably probably bloomed up to about 220 pounds at, at his heaviest. Down to a, a playing weight of uh, 200 pounds, 202 pounds. Fantastic. What an absolute legend. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed that. I did.